Hi everyone. Today I wanted to introduce you to this stamp set that I have been really loving lately. It's the Big and Bold Friendship and Sympathy Rose by Colorado Craft Company. And here I have two examples of the stamp that on the left I watercolored it and on the right I colored it in with some Copic markers and that one on the right is not finished yet. Um, but anyway, I thought I would show you the making of the watercolor rose today. Um, since watercolor is one of my New Year's resolutions, I've decided that I want to branch out a little bit from Copic coloring. While I'll still be Copic coloring, I also want to try some other mediums as well, and I thought that watercolor would be a good place to start. So what I did um, over the Christmas break, I picked up some little sampler sets of some Daniel Smith watercolors from Dick Blick and the set that I'm using here is the inspiration set and it has six different colors that are already in a little plastic tin that you can kind of experiment with and they're all purpley colors and the color that I'm using here for our watercolor rose is called Moon Glow and it's a really really beautiful color and to start, I stamp the image onto some Arches cold press paper and I use some Distress ink in antique linen to stamp the image. The image is very large, so this is about, I would say, six by six inches. So it's larger than an A2 size card base. So if you wanted to turn this rose into a card, you'd have to cut off a little, a little bit of it to make it fit on an A2 size card or you could just make a larger card if you want to have the entire image in there. So let's talk a little bit about the coloring. So watercoloring is new to me, so I am not um, by any means an expert yet. I'm just a, a beginner in this medium, but I thought that this stamp was perfect for a beginner because it's nice and big and it has the shading already filled in for you. So you have some little cheat guides so you know where to put the darkest shades and that's wherever you see those um, little dark marks um, those are kind of clues to the person coloring in the stamp that that's where your darker shades are to be and what I love about the distress ink is that while you stamp it on it's just going to mix right in with the watercolors as you color so those marks will disappear and it'll just be replaced by the paint that you're laying down. So the technique that I'm using here is I'm coloring petals that are not right next to each other so that the colors don't spill into one another. And I'm trying to wait until each petal dries before coloring in the petal next to it. I'm largely following the little shading guides that are in the stamps, but here and there I kind of add my own little um, shading to it where I just thought it seemed like the right thing to do. So if you see like wherever you have a little part of the rose petal that is flipped over, so those are those really light white petals, right underneath the flipped over edge I'll add a little bit of shading just to make sure that our petal stands out against the background. And here I am just still adding in my shading. So what I'll do is I'll go in with a pretty dry brush to start with a lot of pigment on it to lay down my first layer. And then I will dunk my brush into my water and um, tap off the excess water and then just kind of bring out the color that I had laid down with that, that that first time and just pull it out to the edges. So it's really, really similar if you're used to using zig markers, it's similar to that technique where you'll you know lay down a line of color and then maybe take a water brush or a brush with a little bit of water on it and just draw that color out um, from the center where you laid it down. So it's a really, really peaceful and relaxing process. And I just really, really love the moon glow which is this beautiful um, purplish gray shade for for this rose 
and there I made a little oopsie. I laid down a little bit too much color and it was very, very wet there. So I just blotted it up with a paper towel really quickly and was able to get most of that color off. Then I thought that it would be fun to start incorporating some other colors into the rose. So I'm taking some turquoise and some like medium toned yellow and I'm just adding that to the little flipped over parts of the rose here. And then I thought for some of them I'd add like a light wash of that moon glow as well. And I'm just experimenting. And at this point I was thinking that my experiment went a little bit awry, that it was starting to look a little messy and that it might have been better to keep the flipped over parts of the rose petal pretty light. Um, but I decided to just kind of go with it and let it dry back and just see um, what happened when it dried and then decide to go from there. So now we're going to color in our leaves and for the leaves I'm using a green appetite that was part of the floral palette sampler by Daniel Smith. So I guess I used two different sets of colors here but I didn't use that that many colors honestly from either of them. I just largely used that moon glow for the rose and then a little bit of turquoise and gold or yellowish gold and then that green appetite right here for the leaves. And for the leaves I'm just making a little bit of a shadow or contour right by where the part of the leaf is underneath the petals of the rose there. And I guess um, now we're going to go to the top part of the rose and I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves. So I'm going to kind of outline them to start and then I'm going to fill it in with a nice light wash of that green appetite and then go to the next leaf and do a similar technique right there just to get a little base color laid down with a little bit of darkness on the edges of the leaves. And I'm making sure that my brush isn't too wide here. And now I was experimenting a little bit with adding some little spokes um, or veins into the leaves. And I'm gonna leave some of them and I'm gonna kind of wash away some of the others. So it's just experimenting here, trying to get a sense of like, what kind of strokes you can make with watercolor since this is largely a new medium for me. And then we're going to color in this little rosebud right here. And um, I'm just going to blot away that excess water wherever I see it. And I think at this point, by the time I got to this point of the flower, is getting pretty comfortable with shading in the leaves. And then I decided to go back and just add a little bit more color to certain parts of the rose as the colors were drying at this point. So I thought maybe this little, the bulb of the rose right here could be a little bit darker. So I'm just adding some darkness there. I think I'm even going in now with some indigo, which is a really, really pretty dark blue color to add just some other, other shades to the rose. Cause you know, if you've ever, gone to your garden and looked at how roses grow in the wild. A lot of times they have these beautiful color patterns to them where on a pink rose you might see some peaches and yellows and on a purplish rose you might see some of these like bluish tones and some pink tones. So I really wanted to have a, um, a rose like that that just was filled with all different shades of these really really pretty purple and blue and turquoise shades. And the brushes that I'm using here, these are black velvet brushes. Um, I'm using them because these are the ones that Sandy Allnock uses. And I, when I started Copic coloring, I followed her a lot and learned a lot about Copic. So for watercolor, I thought it was pretty safe to follow that same path and just kind of start, um, you know, taking lots of, of tips and advice from Sandy to get started out. And I'm using a pretty small brush, so I think this is a four here. Um, I found that the smaller the brush, the easier it was for me to control, especially with respect to how much water the brush retains. 
I'm finding that that's the hardest part of getting used to watercolor is just um, water control and, and getting used to having the right amount of, of water on your brush. And I found the smaller brushes retain less water so they're a little bit easier to control. So for this little rosebud, I thought we would make it with some lavender and um, rose colors. And it's just going to be a very, very loose um, rose here. I'm not going to make it as detailed as the, the rose that's in bloom in the center of the page. And by the time this becomes a card, I think a large part of that little um, bud is going to be cut off anyway. So now I'm just going to add some deeper green to the leaves and some more shadows. Again, I'm just using one color here for the leaves, just that green appetite. I'm just going to make a little stem there that's kind of peeking out from behind that rose. And then I thought we could add a little wash of color around the rose. And I wasn't sure what color to use, so I decided to just use this really, really light um, rose color. So I think this is quinacridone rose, but it is very, very, very watered down. So there's very, very little pigment, pigment in this wash. And I'm just going to take my brush and kind of add just a little border, like a little irregular border around the entire rose and around little white areas um, as well. And on the outer ed edges, I'm just playing around. So I'm taking some of that light turquoise and just putting a little wash on the outer edges. That part didn't look that great so by the time this becomes a card I will probably have cut off that turquoise then I'm just adding some white highlights here with a um, white colored pencil and I kind of like that pebbly look that the that the pencil is giving the the drawing there it almost looks like there's little glistening drops of water on top of the rose but what I'm hoping is that as I get better with water coloring, I'll, I won't need to add details like that. Maybe I could, I can say more with my water coloring itself. So if I did this again, I would probably leave the um, outer edges of the, those rose petals pretty, pretty light. Now I'm just splashing some different colors all over the rose. So this is white gouache. There is a little bit of the moon glow and a little bit of the turquoise as well. That I splashed around and then once we're done with the splashing I think I, that is gonna do it for this little watercolor painting so I'm just gonna peel up the painters tape and then we can take a look at the finished product and that's all I have for you today everyone I will show you a picture um, at the end just so you can see what it looked like in card form and I will be back again soon with a Copic version of this lovely rose. I found that it's not great just for water coloring, but for Copic coloring as well. And I wish everyone a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again soon in the next video.